everybody. Hope you're all doing well today. Bear with me here while I get this set up. Hello, Evergrowing Farm. I'm really glad you joined me. Yay! <laughs> Hang on. Hey, my dear Michelle. Okay, bear with me. I'm trying to get my tripod set up here. There we go. Okay, hopefully it'll stay put. I hope you guys are all doing good today. I am really excited to be on here. And sorry I missed you Friday. I was a little under the weather, so I decided to save you the trouble of watching me, and I thought I'd do it today. So I thought today I would touch on a couple questions that I've received since I started doing the off-grid and homesteading Periscope. Um, one of the questions was internet, so I wanted to touch on that. When we moved here in 2010 and we set up our canvas wall tent, I was very blessed at how God lined things up for me in that um, at 16, he nudged me to get involved in programming computers and opened that door wide open for me. And I dove in and have loved it and am very blessed. Um, but what that has, had opened up for me as well is uh, web design and programming. And being that I can work with an internet connection. I can be anywhere as long as I have an internet connection. I can work. So that was one of the huge benefits um, in me being able to keep things going while we were building our home and um, really save me. However, the question always is, how do you have internet connection when you live off-grid? Okay, off-grid to us is solar power. So we have power 100% of the time. Um, during the day, it's from the sun. In the evening, it's from our batteries. When we were living in our canvas wall tent, it was either generator or solar power during the day. I had a very small portable panel, and um, it was not near as kind as our beautiful solar system that we have for our home. It was a bit painful. It didn't always work, so sometimes I had to power my equipment using the truck batteries through an inverter, because um, if we had rainy days and I had a client that needed um, attention, that was my means of doing that. Um, you got to be careful when you're using your truck and an inverter because if you leave it running too long, you will uh, drain the batteries and um, you also waste gas. So it was a little tricky while we were building our home, but I did have the portable solar panel and the way I had internet is I used HughesNet, which is satellite internet. And honestly, if you're just living your day to day and trying to keep in touch with everyone, hey, beautiful. Good to see you, Melissa. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> um, if you're living your day-to-day -day and you don't have a lot of uploading and downloading to be concerned with, you can get away with a satellite internet. Because I had 75 or have 75 clients that require attention and a lot of uploading and downloading was going on, I was paying out the nose for HughesNet. Uh, they get you with all the little... Um, fees and those fees add up when you are blowing um, your minimums out of the water with your internet so that was very difficult for us and very costly if I was just blogging and just writing it wouldn't be a problem so that's something to keep in mind so you could get away with satellite internet um, but it's it's not near what we have now I we have been truly blessed a young entrepreneur purchased land um, or lease land on a mountainside that is adjacent our eaves and put up a internet tower so we have higher speed internet than a lot of people do in the city so it's awesome um, it does have its quirks every once in a while because it is also solar powered so when we get excessive wind storms or ice storms occasionally things happen with the batteries up there on the mountain so we may lose internet that has happened I don't know maybe four or five times that we've lost internet for three days maybe two days three days max so it's been a real blessing, and that is how we have internet. Now, I want to describe a little bit of what my office looked like when we were in the tent. Um, oh, you're welcome. I'm really pleased to go over this, and I will be filling you in with a lot, Mandy. Um, I really intend to really break the misconceptions of solar. Um, we have guests joining us right now. Her name is Rhonda from The Farmer's Lamp. You can find her at thefarmerslamp.com. I encourage you to check her out. She is going to be adding a section on our blog about um, being thrown into off-grid living. Uh, they are staying here and had never experienced off-grid living and solar power. So I thought it would be a great addition to have her share her insight as well um, because 
I don't always get to sit down and share all the information that's in my head that I would really like to get out there. And the other thing is these videos make it so much easier for me right now. So I want to break the misconceptions of off-grid living. Everybody's afraid to embrace it. Everybody hears that Florida, the state of Florida has made um, off-grid living and solar power uh, illegal as an, a, a main source of power. So everybody thinks it's global. It's not. It's not. And and the government is not liking that we're all looking into solar and alternative energy um, because it will um, take some money out of their pocket. But it's an awesome lifestyle. And I think that it's something we should be permitted to do. Our ancestors lived, you know, with no power. And honestly, I could easily shut off our power and I would be a happier person. I would not have to worry about my phones blinging and, and my, checking my emails because honestly, the less connected I am, the happier I am. But it's my livelihood. It's my lifestyle right now. But someday I will heap up all of my electronics in the middle of the wilderness and walk away. That is eventually a goal, you know, to live out in the middle of absolutely nowhere with no power. And our ancestors did that, and they didn't have struggles. I love sitting in lantern light. You know, that's how we uh, had light in, in the tent, is we had a, a Dietz lantern, uh, an oil lamp, and that was our lighting. And when we moved in the house, we moved into a 30 by 36 foot square living quarters that was had a plywood floor and a wood stove in the corner because we had to get in out of the elements there was a foot of snow on the ground when we moved into our home that we built so it was it was um it was a romantic setting for me i liked it i liked the rawness of it i cooked on my wood stove for several weeks till we got things into place and got the gas stove hooked up but i cook on my wood stove every winter when it's on i cook my roasts and make breads and muffins and cookies and whatever and it's just such a blessing to be able to live that way so what I'm getting at is the romantic part of it is the simplicity and I also want to blow up the misconceptions of simple living because so many people live vicariously through a lot of us and they think that we are void of struggles and uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for um, you know, financial struggles and and um, that life is just completely easy. It's not. It's 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 a it's a harder life because there's a lot of work to do because we choose to do things traditionally. But it's such a better life. It's such I you know I will be writing about that and upcoming because it is something that's a real passion for me right now, um, especially since I have personally had to slow down with my health issues. Is really embracing the simple life and understanding what it is and appreciating the beauties of the simple life and and helping people to understand what the simple life really means you know that we do work harder we might work longer sometimes but we love what we do and that is key if you don't like what you're doing in life you're not going to be very happy you're going to have a void and so that is that makes a big difference in life and People are fearful of giving up their modern day conveniences when you really do not have to, which I'm going to touch on Wednesday or Friday. You can find me here on Periscope Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. My blog, Mandy, is treyerwilderness.com. And uh, I also have a weekly radio show that's out every Wednesday on our website as well as on iTunes where I talk about this. I also have a lot of guests that are doing similar things, homesteading. We really want to touch on that and share more about the simple life with people and, and what we do. Um, but this is a really awesome lifestyle, and there are a lot of misconceptions to homesteading and off-grid living, and that's why I want to talk about these things. Like I said and like I started, Internet connection was one of the big concerns for a lot of people. Our biggest struggles are our phones, believe it or not. We purchased the raw land, and we don't have any power lines back here. We don't have any landlines for our phones back here. So our phones are through our internet connection and thankfully we do have a good internet connection. It did not work well on HughesNet with, this, with the uh, plan we had. So voiceover um, internet is hard on satellite internet so that might be a struggle but if you're looking for land, if you have an area where you have a cell phone connection, keep this in mind, you may be able to use your phone as your Wi-Fi. I know with ours, Verizon, now we don't have internet, uh, 
phone connection here. Uh, our cell phones do not work within about a 30 mile radius. So our phones basically work when we're out, but not here. But if it did work here, I could use my, my cell phone as my Wi-Fi connection. Um, so that's another option for you is to find land that you do have an internet connection and you could avoid having to worry about, you know, your satellite internet and things like that. But um, I'm jumping around today, so forgive me. Um, it's extremely hot in my she cave because um, heat rises and I'm, I'm in the loft. So it's a little warm in here. My mind's not staying together. <laughs> but um, I mentioned about my, my office when I, we were setting up camp. And I want you to realize something. If you purchase raw land and you decide to do something like we are, you wouldn't have to live in a tent. You could purchase a camper and live in the camper so you're more out of the elements and have more of um, your conveniences because I know not everybody can just leave modern day and end up in a canvas wall tent with dirt under your feet. But to me, that was the cake. I, I would drop everything and do that all over again because honestly, simple living to me is, you know, um, little house in the prairie. Um, it's, it's, to me, that's glamour. I love that. I love how I feel using my cast iron skillets and working in my kitchen and working in my garden and being out with my animals. You know, this lifestyle is for me. It may not be for you. And if you do want to embrace something like this and you don't feel you can go cold turkey from modern day to a tent, you know, you could find a cheap camper and live that way. Now, we stayed warm and dry. Uh, we did have a wood stove in our um, tent. And... Um, my office was a Rubbermaid tote, one of the, I'm, I'm going to say 30 gallon, it wasn't very large, it was, it was, um, I'll have to double check the gallon size of it, but it was, it wasn't, it wasn't that big, you know, I could fit my laptop in it, my router in it, and all my cables, I had drilled holes on either side and put grommets in so the liquids and the water and the rain could not get in there, nor could the bugs, and I put my power cables out either side so that I was able to um, plug things in without removing my equipment from this tote because I did end up working in the rain an awful lot and my office moved every day. I was all over the place working. If I was on the generator, I may have been in the mess tent. I may have been out in the yard. Um, working out of the truck was another option, you know, like I had mentioned. So, and the way um, that the, the solar panel that I used for working um, was small. And it is actually what we use to um, power the batteries to feed the water into our home, which will be another day's topic. But it's all doable, and it's not something that you have to be afraid of. It's just something that you need to educate yourself on and learn um, what you can do and what you can't do. And honestly, there isn't really anything you can't do. I'm going to touch on this later this week, too. Um, I had mentioned about the power and that we have it all the time. Um, we live very frugally. Um, one of the means of having power all the time sometimes is in the winter or in the rainy seasons, you may need to use a generator to power your batteries. And I'll explain how all that works later this week. But um, we are very frugal and we make every effort we possibly can not to have to use that generator because fuel is another expense and I just don't want to have it. So that's also why we gave up our um, modern day power tools and equipment for in the kitchen um, because I really do like the traditional aspect of things. So like I said, I like using my cast iron. I pull the hand mixers off the wall, dust them off and use them. My graters and I do have a manual mill, the Wonder Mill Junior Deluxe I use to, to mill my grain, but I do also have a powered one. And um, all of that equipment can be used on sunny days. So my days revolve around the sun and I utilize my, my um, power tools when the sun is shining, and so does my mountain man if he needs to weld or he needs to um, saw things with his saws, you know, and different tools, he will do them on, we plan our projects for sunny days. And summertime, for the most part, we have a lot of sun. We have a rainy season in the spring, we have a rainy season in the fall, and then in the wintertime, we have a lot of sunshine too. And another beautiful thing about the wintertime is when you have extremely crisp days, you get a lot of reflection when there's snow on the ground, and uh, the crisp cold really helps to improve uh, our power. So I love to get more questions from you folks so that I can answer the things that really um, are on your mind or are your concerns if you were interested in embracing an off-grid lifestyle. I wanted to mention and do a shout out to two different companies today. Um, 
would wind turbines work? Yes, um, Lynette, good question. Um, wind, wind and hydropower are great resources. And actually, if we were able to, we would have them in place because your solar would work during the day and um, the wind power and the hydropower would work in the evenings. So you would have absolutely constant power. Um, we have a seasonal stream that runs through our place. So in the wintertime, we could um, utilize hydropower. Um, wind is iffy out here. We get a lot of wind at times, um, but it's very powerful winds. And then other times it's just dead. So it wouldn't really benefit us where we are located to have wind. Um, but the uh, hydropower is something I highly recommend and, and coordinating the two to utilize hydro and solar so that you have, you know, your backup power and would have power all the time, not worrying about um, having to use a generator and charge your batteries if you have a year-round stream or creek in, on your property. And if it's small, oftentimes you can um, bottleneck it or um, condense it, and you will gain enough uh, force to utilize the hydro. So great question. Thank you. And um, the shout-outs I wanted to do were for Sunjack. You can go to treyerwilderness.com slash Sunjack. They are having a special today on, and bear with me here, um, on all their solar equipment. I use their equipment when I'm out in the woods to power my iPad when I'm writing, and they have some really great products. They are very durable, and I'm really impressed by them. And I wanted to give you the coupon code for them. Let me find that real quick for you. Sorry, I didn't have that handy. Um, I'm getting, I'm just getting used to this live video. It's a little tricky for me. This wasn't my cup of tea. But let me share that co coupon code with you. It is Black Friday 2015. Okay. And um, the other company I'd like to do a shout out to is Backwood Solar. They have such knowledge awesome products. You will find a lot of mention to them in my upcoming book, How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle, which is um, on pre-sale right now, and we are having a Cyber Monday sale also. You can go to treyerwilderness.com slash store, and you will find our survival tools that my husband has manufactured. My son makes uh, elk hide leather moccasins and paracord survival tools. And I have my cookbook and pre-sale on my How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle, as well as a pre-sale on my class for January, which is Getting Organized in a Crazy Busy World. So um, you can use Cyber Monday 2015 in the shopping cart, and you'll get 25% off of anything on our on our website. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, my book is going to be the soup to nuts of solar and what it's been like for us and the different hacks we have used, um, one of which is with our water in our home which has saved us power and the different uh, tools and equipment that we recommend and how we recommend you getting started, which I will also be talking about as we go through Periscope here. So um, check out those two companies, uh, Backwood Solar. You can find it at backwoodsolar.com. And again, it's sunjack.com. I'm sorry, treyerwilderness.com slash sunjack. Um, that'll take you to the special page for today for their sale. So Keep the questions coming. You can email me at any time at survive at treyerwilderness.com. And again, forgive me, my mind is a little scattered and I've got to get used to this live video, but I really thank you guys for joining me and I encourage you to spread the word. If there's other people that are looking for solar and details on solar, I really plan to share that with you and there'll be webinars upcoming with Backwood Solar and um, they just are, have amazing customer service, great products, and um, we are... We are getting our products from them. I need to get some new materials for our water setup, and um, I will keep you posted and in the loop on that so you can see how we set things up. So I'm going to jump off of here today, but I'll be back on Wednesday at 1 p.m. again, and look forward to seeing you guys then. Take care, and God bless.